Thanks very much, Una. Well, Waterford's Tyg de Burka will miss Sunday's All-Ireland Hurling semi-final against Cork after his suspension was upheld. His latest appeal was rejected last night. The Dacia are, of course, looking to join Galway in the championship decider. From a Waterford perspective, it's very disappointing. The news that Tyg de Burka's appeal was rejected in the early hours of this morning by the DRA, the Disputes Resolution Authority, which means that Tyg de Burka cannot play in Sunday's All-Ireland Hurling semi-final against Cork. A massive loss, massive loss for himself in particular in terms of his own family support and what he's brought to it. So very sorry for him, but look, we've espoused enough about the panel over the last three or four years. You know, we now have a cause, if you like, in terms of, you know, it'd be, it'd be absolutely, you know, brilliant for us if we could get to a final and, you know, have Tyke involved at the final stage, if you like. So that's part of a motivating factor going forward, if you like. Meanwhile, on the Cork-Waterford border, just outside Yall, the tension is palpable. It's all Ireland semi-final time and life is hotting up on both sides for the locals. I would say water are definitely going to win. Um, I think we've been there long enough. I think we definitely need to be part. I think water are going to win on Sunday. They're a great young team. I think they've got a prospect going for them and I have great faith in them. Clashmore is a beautiful village in West Waterford, just a few miles from Yall. They love their hurling and their county around here. Yeah, the rivalry is intense and a lot of people would walk in Yall and, you know, go shopping in Yall and that, so there's a bit of banter going on the whole time, yeah. We've great hurling people in Yall, great hurling people in Clashmore, and it's all about the game. Cork beat Waterford twice this year in both the league and the Munster Championship, so the day she came through the scenic route to Sunday's semi-final. Kevin Moran leads by example. Different journey, um, obviously losing to Cork on the first day wasn't part of our plans, but... You know, we've had a few matches under our belt now and we're back to Hurling semi-final next Sunday against Cork and we can't wait for it. Waterford Hurlers have been knocking on Heaven's door for the last number of years. They lost last year's semi-final to Kilkenny, but they did, however, beat Kilkenny in this year's championship, which was huge for them. They now head to Cork Park on Sunday, hoping for a final place for the first time in nine years. Marty Morris, the RT News, Waterford. Now, as Waterford look forward to an All-Ireland hurling final, its county board says it's hoping the same scenario might apply to Austin Gleeson, as happened with Galway cornerback Adrian Toohey last week. Galway say, Waterford say there was no intent on the part of Austin Gleeson in an incident with Cork's Luke Mead during yesterday's semi-final. Paddy Joe Ryan with relations and friends discussing yesterday's epic win by the Dacia. The chair of Waterford County Board said there was no intent on the part of Austin Gleeson in an incident with Cork player Luke Mead, which happened during yesterday's All-Ireland semi-final. The GA will handle all these things in their own time. We're hoping that the same scenario might apply as applied last week with the Galway cornerback. It, there was no intent. We'd be hoping that it would, it would be not classified as deliberate. And that's our hope, you know. We don't want to be entangled again in the Austin controversy for the next couple of weeks. He also said they'll address any matters arising in the referee's report, if any exist. Also in relation to Conor Gleeson, who was sent off on a straight red. All over the county, people are talking about the win, including Austin Gleeson's amazing goal. Fantastic, fantastic. Something, something special. I mean, to the, to the pleasure to watch. The man is an unbelievable talent. Unbelievable talent. And Let's hope he'll get the chance to showcase it in the final as well. I've been at all the All-Irelands they've played in since 1948. No. And I hope I can get a ticket now for this one as well. <laughs> we'll see how that goes then. As the build-up for the final begins, commentators say a low-key approach is best. We've suffered a lot of losses in semi-finals, so there's a bit of exuberance for, winning, for getting over that hurdle. Uh, but uh, I've been at 45 all Ireland and I've only seen Waterford in one all Ireland in that time, and I want to forget about that all Ireland. so uh, let's get uh, better memories from this one. Damien Tiernan, RT News, Waterford. Thank you very much, Sharon. Well, Waterford's Conor Gleeson will miss the All-Ireland Hurling final after his appeal to the Central Hearings Committee failed. Gleeson attempted the, to have the red card he received in the semi-final rescinded, but the decision was upheld. Waterford's Conor Gleeson from Four Mile Water will not play in this year's All-Ireland Hurling final, and Waterford will not appeal the red card and proposed one-match suspension. This follows a meeting last night in Croke Park with the Central Hearings Committee. The CHC upheld the decision that disciplinary action will be taken for a breach of Rule 7.2b, striking with a hurling with minimal force. Waterford could appeal, but have now decided to go no further with the process and concentrate on preparations for the All-Ireland Final. We had a very fair hearing in Croke Park last night, back late in the night. Um, prior to the meeting, I met Connor's mam, discussed with Connor herself, so 
unfortunately we were unsuccessful in our in our with the hearing if you like and we've decided to park it now and look forward to the all earned. Are you going to appeal it at all? No, no appeal. You know, I think the angle of approach was to try and get the red card downgraded to a yellow card and look we had a very fair hearing as I said and um, whilst Connor's ultimately disappointed, there's a certain pragmatism in, in terms of his approach and we're keen to involve him in the run up to the Dollar and, and prepare for it now as best we can. For Conor Gleeson, there is now heartbreak and frustration knowing only too well that he won't be playing in this season's All-Ireland Hurling Final. That case is now closed. Meanwhile, for Waterford, they can now concentrate on preparing without Conor for the All-Ireland Hurling Final on the 3rd of September against Galway. Marty Morris, the RT News, Waterford. With that, well, now we're joined by Michael Dignan and Brendan Cummins to look ahead to an All-Ireland Hurling Final that's attracting massive interest. Don't let your head hang alone. And it comes out to Johnny Cohen. Cohen, Galway looking for another one. It's Cammy once again firing it in from near the sideline. It's a miracle shot. It's gone over the bar. Galway are in front. Will Barry Kelly blow it up? Because of the talent that he has, there's always a chance that it's going to go over, but you know, it was uh, some score to win the game. It's over! Galway are in the All Final of 2017! In terms of the, the colour or the dynamic of the final, I think it's the final that everyone wanted. Waterford are in the All Ireland Hurling Final 2017. Well, lads, it's an unusual pairing, isn't it? And that adds to the excitement of it. Galway have waited so long, Waterford have waited a lifetime. And the fact that nobody has won All Ireland, what about build up? How many finals did you play in, Brendan? Played in five. There's um, first enough to, to win two, and uh, my first one was obviously in uh, 1997, I was 23, thought I was going to play in loads of finals after that, and the last one then at age 35 was probably, uh, in 2011, is the one I had the most gyps in, or whatever you want to call it, the most jitters the week of the match. Why, why do you think that is? I don't know, I think I overthought everything that was going on, I tried to shield myself away, I was very conscious that I can't do this, I can't do that, rather than just maybe go with the flow, and plus two, there was the added pressure and tip was, can you do two in a row when you hadn't done it before? Yeah. All that kind of stuff but I remember before the game got out on the pitch I felt completely different at 11 I didn't <coughs> and it was just maybe from the Monday Tuesday before the match not just getting on the bus that morning it can creep inside your head because there is a bit of a circus going on there's no doubt about that is it easy for players to avoid that circus Michael um, I was away from home uh, working in Dublin uh, living in Nace at, uh, for most of the, I played in four and from 94 to 2000 in a short space enough time to play in four finals but the lads at home it's you can't avoid it I don't think but in work uh, just on the street going you know, going about your day-to-day -day business so you can't avoid it so I suppose the thing is you have to try to embrace it then and try to you know enjoy it and um, uh, certainly Galway are kind of more locked away aren't they what seem to be having a seem more to be uh, well it seems yeah. to be that way yeah, yeah. I know the Waterford press night very open um, but look every every manager has his own style and uh, but look as you say there what a final to look forward to like yeah. it's to it, 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 in, in a, from a neutral point of view, it'll be amazing for whoever wins it, but I think it's going to be so disappointing for whoever loses it because of the fact that neither of them have won for yeah. so long. And two outstanding young managers, uh, great players on both teams that have never won all Ireland. Like it's, it's, it's brilliant, as I say, for somebody, for one team, but the other team that loses, the disappointment will be unreal. OK, briefly, let's look at how you think the teams might line up. How do you think Galway will line up? Michael? Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any major uh, changes from the Galway team. Uh, Colin Callanan, uh, obviously, one of many great goalkeepers in the country at the moment. I think he's been a great servant. Um, the full back line, Adrian Tuohy last year went off against Tipperary. It was a huge loss, but you know he can play around the place. John Hanbury in for it, Paul Killeen, who was injured, and Dahi Burke, brilliant all year. And the half back line has probably been their best line, their most consistent line. Parik Mannion, Aidan Hart will pick up the, the loose role, I presume, and Garrett McInerney. Uh, late comer into the team, we'll talk about him a bit more. Johnny Cohen and David Burke, I think their clash in the middle of the field will be huge because Waterford have been brilliant there so far with Kevin Moran and. and uh, Gone over my head. And uh, the half hour then, Joe Cannon, the main man, Joseph Cooney, son of Joe, Garrod, son of Jerry, you know, that link back to 87, 88, and Cotton Manuel will probably start inside. But, uh, you know, he's had a quite enough year by his standards injured earlier in the year. And then I think the two 
Connors inside, Connor Whelan and Connor Cooney, I'd be looking at them in a little bit more detail. They've been brilliant all year. And Niall Burke probably struggling a bit to find his form. Should be in there. Now Jason Finn be an option, and I think Johnny Glynn obviously will be a huge option as well off the bench if he doesn't start. All right. And Brendan Waterford, obviously they're without Connor Gleeson now, which is a blow to them, obviously, but there's a kind of an obvious replacement. Yeah, there is, yeah. absolutely. Uh, it, um, it is a loss, all right, there's no doubt. They're missing, but obviously in goal, um, they're going to start off with uh, Stephen O'Keefe, and they've been having a fantastic year um, as well, although their system hasn't been tested as much. The full back line with Fife's, uh, Barry Cockton, and Noel Connors. Again, you know they've been solid. Connors has been great trying to get out in front of, out in front of his man all year. Then we look at a half-back line, we'll call it uh, Jamie Barron, uh, Dara Fife's and Bennett. Bennett the last day really impressed me. You know, he took a little bit of while to get into the game, but in the second half he really thundered into that into that game um, against Cork. So at midfield then, look, we'll put eight and nine as, as more than the Burka, but we know the roles that, that both are going to play. Um, in the half-forward line then, um, you look at Philip Mahoney, Austin Gleeson and Paul, uh, Paul Rick Mahoney. Obviously Philip Mahoney will, will be slipping back and we'll touch on that later where the, the real roles are going to lie. And then on the inside line, um, Jay Dillon, Brick Walsh and Shane Bennett. Really Dillon and Shane Bennett are the two inside guys yeah. and the guys who do the most leg work, I would say, for Watford. All right then, so that's the potential 1-15. to 15. But where they'll actually line out, you made reference there, that's the... Formal, that's how it'll appear in the programme. Yeah, it appears in the programme. Yeah. Now, traditionists will say, look, you, whatever your name on the programme is, is the way it should be out. But we all know now at this stage the way that the Watford team are going to set up. The sweeper system has been has been the highs and lows of it have really been debated. But for me, this is the way the Watford team are, are going to set up. It's really important they keep seven defenders with Ty de Burke filling the edge of the D and Dara Fives there on the 65. Their job is to not move outside that 65. The job of the midfielders then in the half forward line with Mahoney, Austin Glee and Walsh is to make sure that if any of the wing forwards for Galway drift back to pitch they will pick them up. Now if that happens there's obviously a wing back free and that's when Jake Dillon and Shane Bennett come into the play and they push up then on those wing backs and that's why it is during games we see a ball drifting into a, into a water forward line with nobody inside yeah. them. What's happened there is they've all pulled back the field to protect themselves. That's the style of play it's designed to make a 70 minute game into a 10 minute game really and that's going to be the big challenge I suppose for, for Galway is can they stay patient enough through this but that's a super system that's been tried and tested the last number of years and more often than not has worked. And can you show us how it works in practice? Yeah, well, what they... I just picked the, the Kilkenny game, really, Des, has been the best example. We'll see an awful lot of this next Sunday where, you know, Galway defenders will play the ball back to their goalie. Watford are happy. They see the pressure Bennett's putting on the ball. They want the goalie to fork it long. And when he does, there's fights because they'll have seven defenders, remember, playing against five forwards. Fives will hold around that half-back line there to make sure there's no overlaps. And there's our friend Ty de Burke will be on the edge of the D. So in case it doesn't, it breaks down, he's there to stop goal chances. So primary possession is always going to be key. And in this instance, the Kilkenny forward gets it. And they start to spin it around and try to find, find space. But the reality is, Watford have seven bodies around that middle area against Kilkenny. Now, Walter Walsh is a fine big man. Joseph Coney's the same way, but he's pushed out to the side, forced out, and like it's energy sapping to break the tackle, so it's very hard to get a good strike. Now, this is where the key comes in for Watford. When they counter-attack, there's a big difference now between the Watford forward line. Look at this, two Watford forwards, one on one with their marker, and you know, so they're playing the ball smartly. Fife also does on the puck outs. He plays a role where he sits in front of the main man who wins puck outs. In this case, it was TJ Reid and Walter Walsh, but then he drives forward. And again, coming out of a congested area, hey presto, there's a walk for forward one on one with a Kilkenny back pull down free and that's when the system works at its very very best so he would sit in front of Joseph Cooney maybe for puck outs for or puck whatever. outs that's what yeah. he look to do because um, you know they'll want to have five seven yeah. defenders I, I, five I obviously have been critical of the sweeper system uh, during you sure the year. have I sure <laughs> have yeah and, um, but you'd have to say that Waterford have evolved you know they're still playing with seven defenders but I think the big change as Brendan's point is they're used to the ball now like last year in the Munster final against Tipperary they poked every ball down to Parry Maher they're not doing that so I, over the summer they've developed it it does take <coughs> time to evolve a system like that doesn't well, it? Well, well I think they've really put a lot of thought I, I think Jamie Barron and Kevin Moore like they've scored 420 between them in the championship 3-8 for Barron 1-12 for Kevin Moore that's phenomenal shooting for two midfielders it's against 11 points from the Galway midfielders so they're, they're getting forward Brick Walsh has scored two goals in the last two matches uh, you know which is unusual for him so they are getting they are getting bodies forward, they're using a short puck out back to Stephen O'Keefe and he's driving the ball along. So they've thought about this and they're bringing on four or five subs in the end to finish it. So it's an evolution. So hats off, you know, credit where credit is due. Waterford have thought about it and developed it. Yeah, and forward options? 
forward options then, you know, like up front then, obviously it's exhausting work yeah. for Shane Bennett and Jake Dillon. Yeah. So we've seen Halloran coming in the last day, Ryan came in, Morris comes in. So after 50 minutes or so, you'd expect that those two front men will be run out of steam and they come off and their job is done. All right, and when we look at Galway and their defensive spine, you know, that's kind of a key issue, and you feel there's been a big improvement there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think Dahi Burke uh, gone in at fullback over the last couple of years. Uh, remember, Seamus Sh Callan scoring three goals against Galway in the All-Ireland semi-final. Uh, John Hanbury was fullback, then Parik Mannion was tried there, and Dahi Burke much more comfortable, you know, at centre-back at that stage, but he's gone back full-back, and, you know, Seamus Callan here, one of the best full forwards, I suppose, we've just seen, and he's, he's right up on top from there. And it's just his physical power, his, his stature. He's able to man-mark, he's able to defend, he doesn't give away a freeze, he's strong in the air. And if you look at Galway over the last 30 years, as I'd argue that the main reason they haven't won not learned is that they haven't found replacements for the late great Tony Keady and Conor Hayes, really strong men that hold that hold the centre. And, like, you look at Burke there, under serious pressure coming out, and, you know, he uses the little ball that slips it away, and Parry Manning in support, so I think he's been massive. But Gareth McInerney, this is an intriguing one for me, he's 27 later in September and he's really only making his way into this Galway team. Now talk about somebody serving their time, but I think uh, maybe of all Michal Donoghue's, you know, I think Anthony Cunningham had brought a lot of these players into the team, but he really has worked on Gareth McInerney. And against Tipperary, that's Bonner Matter there he's pushing out of the way and driving out. And, you know, like he's taking man. hard tackles, yeah. he's a big, strong man. Yeah. And, you know, in the first half, they put Noel McGran, I think they thought Noel would drift around and get scores, but he held the centre. And this is what I love about him, he's looking up and playing the pass, that's into David Burke. You know, an easy chance for David Burke. I don't think he actually scored that one, but you know, so he's a hurling brain. He's very physically strong, and I think they're the two men that they'll leave up the centre no matter what happens around. And in attack, like Goey have relied on Joe Canning so much in the past, but that hasn't been the case this year. Well, it hasn't. Um, to like an he's extent. had his moments. Yeah, it, it hasn't to an extent, but I think yeah, definitely. You know, there has been. Uh, you know, some of the forwards, but I think in particular, uh, Conor Cooney. Conor Cooney has suffered an injury over the last couple of years, but he's come back in now. This won't happen next one. Look at the room that Conor Cooney has here against Wexford. But Wexford did play with a sweeper, and you watch Galway all year. They're trying to play a ball into space into Conor Cooney and into Conor Whelan. But he's a big man as well. Like that's a great take, and over the bar, Joseph Cooney is bringing a physical presence at the half hour then but you know Cooney has this natural ability like to go out and, and score like that that's you know that's something like maybe only Joe Canning could do and this other man Conor Whelan like you saw him last weekend during the 21 he scored a brilliant goal against Limerick he didn't look like a lad that was minding himself that's not in his like for an All-Ireland final coming up but you watch him he's drifting out from the corner here out to the wing and puts it over the bar the ball is in the, he hits the ball very high actually you see how long it's, it is dropping over the bar but I think the next this score here this typifies him he's a low centre of gravity down on the ball brilliant pick up and swivels and over the bar and I just think that they're hard to watch even with extra defenders and everything else this ability to win your own ball is so strong mm -hmm. he's able to make the space for himself and having said all that I still think that there is a huge reliance on Joe Canning you know when the pressure came on against Tipperary he had, he had a poor first half by his own standards this point was just unbelievable to win the game but he scored the last five points of the game no other goal player scored in the last 11 minutes and Joe Canning has been doing this for 10 years with the county probably for 12 or 13 years with the club and it, I think if Galway were to win, they're going to need a, a huge game from Joe Kennedy. Who, who has the stronger bench? Because it's not, it's not a 15-man game at all now. Yeah, I mentioned the, the, the Waterford players early coming yeah. in up front, mostly forwards. I think forwards win, forwards win matches now when we get to our Ireland finals the last 10 minutes or so. And I think Waterford um, have, the, have the stronger bench. Morris has been really good. Brian O'Halloran, both of those, you know. Uh, Morris holds up the ball and Brian knows his role around him as well. And when players start to get tired and fatigued and all that, you know, to have experienced mm -hmm. players coming in like that. So I think for me, Waterford shaded. Would, um, you, agree, would you agree? Um, I, think, uh, I think Waterford have a that's part of their game plan now it's not just substitutions like they're, they're it's nearly like rugby now they're being brought in with 20 to go and they are, are all making a massive impact so the degree they're very strong i think Galway as well they're more forward oriented Tom Mon thomas monaghan has been coming on playing really well had a great game for the under 21s again last saturday uh jason flynn who's capable in 10 minutes of winning the game on his own a massive talent but i think jonathan johnny glenn is the big um, man I think for Galway I think he, he had a bad injury he was out injured his comeback was I think it may be starting that team only that he missed so much time mm -hmm. but they're all up front so if Galway lose it back I don't see that much cover there and Waterford probably the same now with Conor Leeson being a huge loss for them okay mm -hmm. I was interested uh, just before we came on air you were your method of working out who you think will win and why and it's based on the scoring ability in these circumstances yeah it is you know I mean if you're talking about trying to like you said win win all Ireland's like that Watford are going to have the two inside forwards and it's all depends I suppose on how each forward line deals with playing against seven defenders probably won't it will only have five forwards in there Watford been really good at that but as Michael showed there I think Cooney and Whelan inside 
the way they move, a lot of the points that they scored against Wexford were out in the wings. They will have to be comfortable doing that again if they're going to win the All-Ireland. And that's why I, I give Galway a, a bit of a nod in because of the way their inside line are able to move. They can win their own ball. They're very dynamic when they move around. And I certainly think that they'll keep tied to Burka. And that, Jonathan Glenn, when he comes in, he'll probably go to the edge of the square and they might go route one. And then, yeah. you know, you'd never know, like Tipperary in the Munster final in 16, when Tip got enough ball in around tied to Burka high, all hell broke loose. I mean, dramatic. What's your own verdict, Michael? Um, you know, I, I was very much Galway, and you know, as it gets closer, I'm giving Waterford. You know, I think they're very experienced. Like, if you look down through the team, like apart from the players we're talking about, like the likes of the Philip Manny, Parik Manny, Noel Connors, outstanding yeah. players. Michael Brick Walsh, what a servant! Like one of my favourite players, I have to say, 16 years. He was a brilliant midfielder, brilliant centre back, and now he's doing it up front. But I think where Waterford did their homework really well in, in, in the last few games. They created mismatches. Like they put Brick Walsh on, on Mar Mark Coleman, who's having a great year, young player, 19, Kevin Moore and Dara Fitzgibbon, and they basically overpowered him. I don't think they'll be able to do that to Galway. Galway are very big. I know Waterford are big, but Galway are a powerful physical team. And I just think that wa Waterford won't create that. They won't break as many tackles. They won't be able, like they're very good at that, breaking the tackle, creating the extra man. But I think Galway's tackling will be so ferocious that I think that gives them the edge. And I, I, I do think, you know, I've been known to change my mind before, but I'm, I'm probably in the Galway camp at the moment. OK, well, you'll have lots of calls from Waterford over the next couple of days. That's two votes then for Galway on the Sunday game. Thank you, lads. Thank you very much. That's about it for tonight. So my thanks to Brendan and Michael for their company and to you for watching. I've no doubt we'll see you all again next Sunday night for Hurling's biggest day of the year, the All-Ireland Final. Until then, bye-bye.